G'day everyone and welcome to our Tuesday footy feed. We begin with mass confusion. It's all about contact in marking contests. Today both Nathan Buckley and Chris Scott have weighed in saying the pushing interpretation has changed. Jackie Reid has the latest. A step closer to his return, Luke Ball joined his teammates for a dip in the icy waters of St Kilda Beach. But all the focus has been on the rules surrounding contact in a marking contest, a topic Nathan Buckley was addressing before he was rudely interrupted. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough job as, a, as an adjudicator. I think the... Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> Pies defender Ben Reid was penalised for pushing Tom Bell Chambers on Anzac Day and the coach admits there is confusion about the interpretation of the rule. And right now, from what I gather, a half a push is OK but a full push isn't acceptable. Um, I don't know what an 80% push, how that's going to be adjudicated. It's a sentiment shared by Geelong coach Chris Scott. I heard someone say the rule's been in for 10 years. I think it's different this year than it has been for the previous nine. If we've been saying you can't bump, block, push or hold in the marking contest, then two of the greatest footballers of all time, and Tony Lockett and Jason Dunstall, um, would have been ineffective. Um, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a great development in our game. Young cat Daniel Menzel goes under the knife today, the first of two procedures to mend his torn ACL. He's um, had obviously a number of procedures around that knee which has involved some, some drilling into the bone. Um, so the first part um, of his rehab will be to take a little bit of bone out of his hip um, and fill those, those um, drill holes in his knee. The Cats are hopeful Paul Chapman can return for Friday night's top of the table clash with Essendon. Jackie Reid, afl.com.au Sydney has ruled out targeting Lance Franklin in Saturday night's grand final rematch. The Coleman medalist has been kept goalless in his past two outings. The Swans return to the MCG for the first time since winning the flag. Coach John Longmire says he's expecting a strong, honest contest and won't be encouraging his players to try and provoke Buddy. You know, I saw some niggling tactics trying to be applied to Wayne Carey and uh, they weren't that successful. Longmire reading nothing into Franklin's recent form. Yeah, I think he looks as though he's competing really well and working really hard. and He's having some shots of goal and he's missed a few, but you know, when we look at what Buddy Franklin can do, we can look at his best, and his, his best is obviously at the absolute top end. Ray Shaw will miss at least another couple of weeks with his abdominal injury. Carlton's Jared Wade has decided not to risk a two-game suspension and won't fight his headbutting charge at the tribunal. It means he'll miss just the one match. Justin Kajitski has accepted his two-week suspension for striking Magpie Jamie Elliott, but the biggest challenge for him could be finding his way back into the St Kilda side. And exciting Hawthorne youngster Bradley Hill is the Round 6 nominee for the NAB Rising Star Award. The 19-year-old kicked two goals and collected 17 disposals in the Hawks' 11-point win over Adelaide. I feel more confident playing this year and I uh, think uh, my skills got a lot better, my kicking and stuff like that improved a lot uh, compared to last year. Brad is the younger brother of Fremantle star Stephen Hill. And just before we go, some late-breaking news out of St Kilda. The club confirming defender Sam Gilbert will not require a knee reconstruction. Surgery revealing the 26-year-old is, though, still expected to miss up to 12 weeks. And that is our footy feed for this Tuesday. Of course, more news as it breaks on afl.com.au and the AFL Live app. I'm Matt Thompson. See you soon.